What Abouters? Welcome back to another episode of What About? Yay! So, I know that last week I promised our What Abouters that we were going to talk about symbols of the Old Testament and the New Testament. However, the following symbols up ahead have been talked about today. Already have been shared and talked about um, in the Old Testament. They were ones that we went through on the stained glass windows. Mm -hmm. um, they're the most well-known, obvious We even talked about signs. some of them the prior week when we were talking about the Trinity. And, and we're even going to talk about some of them when we yeah. um, talk about, you know, what we're going to talk about today. And the New Testament, obviously, is just chock full of Jesus' teachings. Mm -hmm. And so we already have those symbols that we kind of are aware of. So yeah. we're going to skip into something else in true quiz fashion. Though. Yeah. Well, we know you guys have liked the quizzes, so mm -hmm. we can't go another episode without a quiz. So today we are going to talk about the catechism. Yay. Yay. So recall those eighth grade years. <laughs> some of you go way back. Some of you, it might just be yesterday, but um, I finished writing the eighth grade confirmation lessons this morning, so. <laughs> oh, well, you cannot answer, okay? okay. Let our, let our what about her. So, our quiz for you today is, what are the six chief parts? Ooh. Now, if Ooh, your yeah. first answer was the what, <laughs> then I highly encourage you in a few weeks when we start our next segment on Lutheranism 101 to stick around, because <laughs> you're definitely going to want to hear all about it. Yeah, six <laughs> chief parts. And if um, the other part of you is going, yeah, I kind of remember talking about that. Once upon a time, yeah. there was these things we learned about in the catechism. In the catechism. There was six of them. We're stalling to give you time to yeah. either look them up or to <laughs> recall in your memory. Um, six main beliefs of the Lutheran Church found in the small catechism written by Martin Luther. Has all of the what does this mean? <laughs> Um, <laughs> most of these parts can be found in a worship service. Yep, at some point in time. <sighs> All right, well, if you answered with these six, <laughs> congratulations, Whataboutters. If you did not, stay tuned because we are going to go through them a little bit more in detail and share with you the symbol related to that chief part. So number one, the Ten Commandments. Woohoo! <laughs> pictured here, we see the Ten Commandments, an Old Testament sign symbol. Yes. Um, Ten Commandments are obviously carved out on the two stone tablets uh, given to Moses to show us how to live our life because, let's face it, um, without it, we would be even more in a mess than we already are. And so, yes, Ten Commandments right here. Yeah, and a lot of them will either show it with like five and five split very nicely. Otherwise, in the Lutheran Church, a lot of times, including in our stained glass windows here, it has it depicted with three on one tablet and the remaining seven on the second tablet, and that just is to help us to remember that the first three deal with our relationship with God, and then the remaining deal with our relationship with others in the world. All right, so good job if you guessed <laughs> Ten Commandments on the first one. Chief part number two. The Apostles' Creed, or the creeds. Ooh, I mean, all thanks. technically all three, but generally when you are studying the creed in the Catechism, it goes with the Apostles' Creed. And we see that when we, um, a pastor asks us after the sermon to stand up and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Sometimes it's the Nicene Creed. Only once, once a year, year <laughs> if you're lucky, uh, you get to say the Athanasia Creed. Um, but the symbol for the creed is right here. Again, one that we talked about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it is representative of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And a statement of what we believe concerning um, who God is and what he does for us. So good job. Number three. Lord's Prayer. Woo. So this symbol right here. Yep, the praying hands uh, we find in the New Testament. Jesus taught us how to pray. When you talk to God, this is how you should do it. Um, it covers everything that we need. Our forgiveness of sins, leading us not to temptation, asking God for our daily bread. Um, recognizing him, that he has all the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So yes, we say that every worship service here at Blessed Savior. So we're and very again, familiar. one that you'll find on our New Testament side <laughs> of the wall too. Stained glass windows. All right, chief part number four, my friends. Sacrament of... Holy baptism. Woo! Depicted right here. 
Um, it is also on our hymnal. I did not grab. Oh, a I hymnal forgot to grab a hymnal today to too. show you right now. But it is on the hymnal as well. I was gonna say it is in your book if you've been following along with that. So it is. <gasps> don't you're gonna show them? Oh, the I'll answer. show them the answer to the next one. <laughs> don't, don't look at the next one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so baptism is the shell depicted with three drops of water. The three drops of water are very important because it is representative of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the pastor says, I now baptize you in the name of. So that's the sacrament of holy baptism. Can you guess the next one? <laughs> Were you paying close enough attention when I revealed the answer? Don't <laughs> say the sacrament of the altar because you would be incorrect. That is wrong. Yes. No, this next one is one that really confuses a lot of people at first because it's the office of the keys. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds. Very um, official. Like there is an office full of keys. Yes. Like that's what it legit sounds right. like. But basically all that is is confession and absolution. And so this is just right here. Yeah. See the two symbol? keys. Mm -hmm. So the office of the keys. And this just shows that um, through the, our confession, our repentance, just like Pastor talked about last Sunday in his um, sermon, through our confession, through our repentance, then we have been given the key to heaven and the key to eternal life. Now, on the flip side, mm, don't be if, caught on this side, friends. Yeah, if we no. don't repent of our sins and ask for forgiveness, then that same key can lock the door to heaven for us. So don't be caught on that side. Be caught on the good side of the key. Have the key to eternal life. Repent and ask for forgiveness. The other thing that's neat about the office of the keys is that we as individuals have been given that power. It is not just the pastor that right. has been given the power of the office of the keys. That's something that we hold as well um, because we have the power to forgive others. But then also we obviously go to God and ask for forgiveness of our sins. So the office of the keys is not just a pastoral thing. It is for everybody. All right. So now we talked about one sacrament, the sacrament of holy baptism. We are working on chief part number six. Yes. There might be another sacrament left that we haven't covered, friends. Do you know what that sacrament is and what part number six? <gasps> this one right here! Yes, the sacrament of the altar, otherwise known as Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. All right, so now this is one, if you are following along in your book. Don't look there. Um, page 26 has a symbol for the sacrament that me and my entire 41 years of being a Lutheran... <laughs> Have never, never seen. ever seen. Never no. ever seen it. Um, most often the sacrament of the altar is depicted with bread and a cup. Mm -hmm. um, think Monday Thursday symbols that you see a lot. Um, but yeah, a chalice that we would use as a common cup and then a loaf of bread or like a wafer represented. Um, page 26 has one that's very different. I was going to say, it's very um, informative to read. Mm -hmm. You can check it out on page 26 and 27 um, because the, it, the symbol is known as the pelican in her piety. So we encourage you to read more about that one and then you'll be one smart cookie, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, so now that we have covered the six chief parts and their symbols, next week, <laughs> we're going to test more of your... <laughs> paying attention and recollection yes. because we have already covered the seasons of the church mm -hmm. year. We have already covered the colors of the church year. Next week, join us as we cover the symbols of the church year. Yes. So we're so going to talk about like yeah. what that means. Dinner. That's what that <laughs> Dinner. means. Let's go for a fish. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about the different symbols in the seasons of the church here, and we'll see kind of how much you've paid attention before <laughs> to know which one is next. But then also you'll be able to put, um, the pyramid symbol with something and a meaning and a color and what season of the church year we are in. So with that, my friends, my fellow whatabouters, we hope that you are good and great and wonderful. See you next time. Bye.